Hello, friends, and welcome to Figure Study, where we appreciate the design of WebDiver. I don't know. I mean, they can't all be winners, and this is probably going to be the only video I do on anything WebDiver. Unless I can somehow luck out and get my hands on Webarion. But yeah, no, other than that, it's pretty much going to be it for me and WebDiver, I think. But anyway, today I'm going to be taking a look at whatever this thing is called and whatever this thing is called, and they both combine to make a big old robot guy called Golemon. I don't know, it sounds like a Digimon, I know, but it's cool, trust me. So, these are both essentially the same figure. They both have a wolf-ish mode, they both have a tank-ish mode. The only difference is this guy has a drill bit and two dog heads. This guy obviously has three dog heads and a buzzsaw thing. For the sake of expediency, I just have the reddish purple one in tank mode and the purplish purple one in dog mode. But just, you know, ultimately, like I'll show off the slight differences a little bit more in depth, but uh, aside from the color, they're basically the same thing, aside from like the drill bit and the buzzsaw and the number of dog heads. Also, you may be noticing I'm wearing sleeves today, and that's because it is very cold and our apartment building is not doing a good job with consistently keeping the heat on. Anyway, uh, we'll start with the reddish purple one. So, whatever this thing is called is a drill tank. And it, it, it's okay-ish looking. They're both kind of okay-ish looking in their various modes. It's just, they're not, yeah. I mean, I'm fine with the color scheme. The very reddish purple with the green is fine. The uh, almost olive green plastic in a few places is fine. The white that's so shiny, it actually looks like a like a mint. Like it, it's it's after dinner mint shiny. This white, it's really weird. But yeah, like the white bits are you know they they stand out, but they stand out well, I think. And the gold is of course nice. I do think it'd be nice if these bits were also trimmed in white and done in gold with the design in the middle there, but I'm assuming it's a budgetary thing. I don't know for sure because I've never actually watched WebDiver, so I don't know how accurate this paint scheme is to the actual character in the show. The tank mode is kind of a mess. It's vaguely a tank. It has treads with obvious dog paws and what is obviously a leg curled up as a turret. And then this that like this isn't even like a cockpit i don't know what this is supposed to be and if you push this button it does that i think it's like an ir sensor for a gradion or gladion i don't know i mean it kind of works as a cockpit like it could be but i don't know if this thing actually ever is supposed to have a cockpit so i don't know i don't know anywhere near enough about web diver to be able to say anything with any authority but yeah it's just it's it's a messy tank it's not great but this isn't the mode that I think anyone would be wanting to get this for. I will say, though, the molding itself is nice. There's a lot of little details in here. And again, I do like this sort of white with gold with like the darker reddish purple in there. Like that's a nice, just the way those colors all work together is nice. And some, I guess, missiles or something up there. And like the molding in this section, it's nothing specific, but it's nice. It adds some visual interest to it. It almost has like a, like, I don't want to say hieroglyphics because obviously it's not hieroglyphics, but it has that kind of feel to it. Like something you might see carved in like a, like a Mayan almost, like Incan or Mayan carvings. Again, I know that's not what this actually is, but like it has just that kind of vibe to it for me. Kind of geometric shapes that aren't actually in any kind of symmetrical pattern. Like I said, that's just what I get from it. I could be wrong. I probably am. But yeah, this thing is... It's a thing that exists. Yeah, let's just move on to the other guy. The other guy is, well, more visually interesting. I'll give it that. And not not the colors. I mean, the color scheme is... It's basically the same exact color scheme as the reddish purple guy. But the purple purple guy has... You know, he's in the dog configuration. So while I don't think either color scheme is necessarily stronger than the other... I do think the dog mode is stronger than the tank mode. And just to clarify, this guy's tank mode is the same as the other guy's tank mode. It's just instead of a big old drill bit, he has this thing. And 
the other guy's dog mode is the same as this guy's dog mode, only it's got two heads instead of three and a drill sticking out of this part instead of a buzzsaw. But yeah, this looks better. It doesn't look great, but it looks better. So what is obviously a robot leg is supposed to, I guess, kind of be a tail. And then, of course, you've got the arms that, or legs rather, that have the tank treads on the sides. And then we have the faces. They're interesting. Again, it's it's a kind of strange design, but it kind of works, I guess. Like, I don't quite get the same hieroglyphics slash Incan and Mayan vibe from the head designs, but like, like the fact that they all have distinctly different heads is pretty cool. Like, each one is definitely different. There's this one's got this kind of fun 3D visor thing going, and they even painted the teeth, which is pretty impressive. Yeah, I mean, there are still plenty of details on this thing that could have been painted. I still think it'd be great if these bits were painted, but I gotta give them credit for painting these little dog heads. They didn't have to do that, and they did, and that's that's impressive. Oh, and yeah, this guy also has the, uh, the thing, like some kind of IR sensor. Again, I don't really know. But yeah, the dog mode, I think, is more effective, but not great. Though I guess while we're doing head stuff real quick, that didn't sound right. Uh, while we're looking at the heads, these are the purpley heads, and you can see the style between them is also quite different. Like, these have a slightly more robotic look to them, mostly because of the headgear, and these have a slightly more organic look to them. And also, they're molded separately. There's a bit less of a difference between these two. Like, the faces are the same, but the, uh, I guess you could call it the hair, the, the mane and, like, the top bits are different. So yeah, again, some different stuff, which is cool. Alright, so let's bring in this guy again. So you can see in dog mode, whatever you want to call it, it's a bit taller, technically, but they're roughly the same size either way, it's just they compact slightly differently. The tank is definitely a little bit more dense, whereas the dog is a bit more stretched out. And for a size comparison, you can see they are pretty decently sized. They're definitely bigger than a Titan's Turn Deluxe. In either mode, they are about the same height, maybe slightly taller than your average Samus Amiibo. And the reason this is here, it's uh, there's two reasons, and I'll be quick explaining that. First reason, I'm going to start using a new standard size amiibo, and that is the Monster Hunter Stories Rider and uh, One-Eyed Rathalos. And that is also because this figure with the Rider and everything is the same height as the Samus amiibo, so the height's the same. Second reason is because I got this as a gift from Diana, and it's awesome, and I want to use it, so I'm gonna. Alright, so awkward explanations out of the way can see that everything is pretty decent size. These guys are not... They're, they're dense. They're dense, they're relatively big, and when they combine up, they get even bigger. But yeah, I think that is enough for the size comparison stuff, don't you? Right, so I do believe it is time to do the robot mode thing. Get these two combined up. Since the transformation is pretty much the same, I'm just going to be doing this one since it'll show up on the background better. So we'll just get him out of the way here and let's get to it. All right, so First thing to preface with all of this is some of the ways that this is arranged is just sort of my own thing. I never bothered looking at the instructions, I just sort of arranged a couple of the bits, which I will point out when I get to them. Um, I just kind of arranged them how I thought they looked best. So, this is going to be the version of Golemon that I prefer. And snap this together. Snap it. Snap it. Snap it. There we go. And that goes in there. Okay. And just adjust this. Adjust these back here. So here is Golemon in one of a couple, I guess, possible robot modes. This is, as I said, this is sort of the one that I prefer to do. But 
really what's interesting about this, aside from the whole symmetrical docking thing, which I mentioned previously, I am kind of a fan of. What's interesting about this is you can actually arrange it four different ways. There's this one. You can do it with the purple on this side and the reddish purple on this side. And then there's a different head that you can do and do it both of those ways with that head. So that's cool. Now, the reason this is my preferred setup is because I just happen to like this head more. And to be quite honest, it doesn't make it much of a difference to me which side the buzzsaw versus the drill is on. So that's fine. Things like the chest here, these bits on the side here, and these bits back here, and these bits up here. Like that is all adjustable. It can be done a number of different ways. This is just how I prefer to do it. I guess since I actually think this guy looks kind of cool from the back, we'll start from the back. And he looks pretty cool. Like I like this setup, how he's got like these big shoulder blades. You can actually see there's some pretty nice detail back here, which will either be his sort of sternum area or his back, depending on how you have him configured. Because again, you can do that. And you actually have uh, these bits, the thumbs swing around. You can spin the heads around. So yeah, they're they're variable. But yeah, there's just like a bit more detail that you can make out in there. A little bit more painted bits, which are meant to be specifically for the robot mode. And then from the front, you get those same details slightly covered up here just because of how I have the chest. You got like this belt area and stuff. And these bits are actually... Uh, mostly hidden in the other alternate modes. So props to them for doing that, I guess. The head is interesting. It's again, it's that kind of after dinner mint white, which is a little weird. Uh, it doesn't really have much in the way of a mouth unless this jaggy looking thing indicates mandibles, but I actually kind of prefer the way this head looks over the, uh, the other one, which I will show in a minute. But uh, yeah, this is, I don't know. There's just something about this that I like. I like how the white works with all of the other white details which now there are a few more like you get the white up here the white here the white in the chest some very minor white bits for like some of the joints and then that head and it's like it's robotic but it also has a slightly kind of ancient civilization look to it and then for the other head that is more gold in color i mean ob it's obviously more gold in color it's entirely gold and this one, it also has that kind of ancient civilization vibe, but I just, I don't like it. Like, it's not as weird, I guess, as the other one. This one has like a defined face, like eyes, nose, mouth, all that stuff. It's got a bit more in terms of painted details. Like, you can actually see there's like a little bit of, uh, there's a little bit of paint up in that crest there, and up here, along the sides there. He has actual, like, defined eyes. But I just don't really like this face. It just, it's not cool to me. It's, I think the other one looks better. It almost looks kind of, I don't know, dopey, which I think has more to do with the expression and the fact that like the eyes stand out so much against this gold. I'm just not really a fan of this head. So we'll switch back. All right, that's better. Yeah, I just, I prefer this one. I feel like the green stands out better on the white. The eyes, they're like kind of beady and threatening. I mean, the shape is, I think, objectively weirder than the other one. It's like this strange kind of crest thing on top and these little ear wings. But I just think this looks a lot better. And in terms of the overall robot, I think it looks really freaking cool. He's very dense, very powerful looking, very bulky. And I really like the chest detail. I like having this kind of ridge along his back. It's kind of hard to see his hands, but uh, what are you going to do? Yeah, he's just, he's very cool looking. And one other thing I forgot to point out that is a possible difference in how things are arranged are the dog heads, which are on the shoulders. I like to curl them down like their shoulder armor of a sort, but like, you know, you could turn them in a few different ways, have them angled up if you wanted. So yeah, there are options. And let's move Golem on off to the side here because you know why. That's right, it's size comparisons again. And here we have Golem on with Titan's Friend Deluxe and our 
amiibo standards. And also here you can see the rider's pretty much the same height as Samus. So, yeah, haha. Anyway, yeah, he's a surprisingly big dude. When he's all put together, he is, I guess, sort of between Voyager and leader size. He's definitely heavier than uh, <laughs> than a more contemporary Transformer of that size. It's just got some very dense plastic in him. And I think I should do one more comparison for putting a stop to the comparisons. So, since this is a symmetrical docking theme, here he is with Transformers Animated Safeguard. And I guess to the head, he's taller than Safeguard, not by a whole lot. Yeah, he's a tiny bit taller than Safeguard, but he is significantly bulkier. Like, Safeguard looks almost skeletal standing next to him. I mean, Safeguard kind of looked skeletal anyway because of those skinny biceps and thighs, but, but no, this is... He's a big dude. And just taking one last look at Goleman by his lonesome to kind of drink in the details a little bit more. He is very cool. A lot about him just speaks to me aesthetically. His silhouette is super bulky and great. His articulation is definitely limited because of his bulk and the fact that like his arms don't really have much in the way of elbow bends. You obviously can't do much with the hands. You know, it's it's not the articulation. Like I didn't get him because I thought he would be a super articulated figure. I got him because he just looked really cool and he continues to do that. He definitely looks really cool sitting on a shelf with uh, with my other figures. I mean, he doesn't really fit in with my Transformers, but but that's okay. He's still very cool. I really, really dig this look. He just has, like, when it's all put together, he definitely has sort of like an ancient machine vibe, which I really dig. It's like, you know, just the little patterning in those green details there. This The saw blade itself looks like ancient dwarven technology almost, <laughs> like something out of Skyrim. The colors work well because the reddish purple and the purple both have that purplish element to them, so <laughs> that blends together well. The very light turquoisey blue and the olive green are kind of clashy, but because of the way they mirror the same elements and because of the fact that they're overpowered by the much brighter colors, it doesn't really bother me that much, or at all really. And I just, I love this guy's silhouette. He's just very very enjoyably bulky in ways that I greatly appreciate. So yeah, this is this is a very this is a very cool figure. I am glad I was able to get my hands on him for why do I keep feeling like this is slightly off? I was glad I was able to get my hands on him for a not too absurd price, I don't think. Trying to find this guy, um, I saw prices all over the place, uh, most of them high. For whatever reason, I forget which one it was, but one of these two was usually going for pretty cheap, and the other one was going for, like, a lot more. And I've seen, as a set, I've seen them going for, like, close to $100, and that's absurd. And I just, I guess I lucked out, because I managed to get the pair of them for, like, 25 bucks each, which it's not necessarily cheap, but it wasn't, you know... I think given the age of this toy and the... Just the fact that it's been difficult to find any other way. I'm, I was I was okay with paying that. And yeah, he's just very cool. Slightly more poseable than a Megazord. <laughs> but he, he is very neat. And I just, I really, really dig his aesthetic, his bulk, his overall silhouette. It's just a lot of really cool stuff coming together here for me. Anyway, I think that is going to do it. So that has been my look at Web Diver, whatever this guy's called, whatever this guy's called, and Golaman. What do you all think? Are you as enamored with this as I am? Does the symmetrical docking just not do it for you? Do you actually like either of the alternate modes? And which of the two heads is your favorite? I mean, I imagine most people prefer the gold one because that's the one I see the most in pictures, although that could have something to do with the show. But I'm curious to know if I'm the only one who prefers the white head over the gold head. So whatever you think, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Any combination of those three would make me a happy Rob. And remember, art is more than meets the eye.